Okay, so tissue fluid, fluid formation is, this is the arterial end of the capillary bed, and this is the venous end, which is emptying into the vein. Now, what we talked about was that the pressure in the um, systemic circulatory system would have started off high as it came out of the aorta. And then as it moved into the arteries and the arterioles, that fluctuation would have reduced because of the elastic nature would have smoothed it out. Plus we get resistance because of the reduced diameter and therefore the pressure then falls because we've got an increased total cross-sectional area and we've got each pipe is smaller so we've got more edge so we've got resistance so the pressure falls. Then it gets to here which is the um, arterial end of the capillary bed. So now we've got a force which is going out, which is a hydrostatic pressure. And the hydrostatic pressure is the pressure being applied by the um, heart on the fluid that's in there. Now remember, you've got in here, you've got red blood cells, you've got platelets, you've got products of digestion, like glucose, and amino acids, and all that of salts, but you've also got big plasma proteins. And these big plasma proteins don't go out of the capillary. Now what this means is that there is an osmotic pressure gradient which is in opposition to the hydrostatic pressure. So you've got hydrostatic pressure forcing liquid, forcing tissue fluid out. And tissue fluid is just plasma minus the plasma protein. Okay. So the plasma proteins stay in the blood, the pl plasma gets squeezed out, and the plasma proteins stay there. Now we've got, if we put another arrow, There is a osmotic pressure, which is smaller than the hydrostatic pressure. So the net filtration pressure is the difference between the hydrostatic pressure here and the osmotic pressure here. So you've got hydrostatic pressure forcing it one way, and osmotic pressure because of the plasma proteins being dissolved in the tissue in the plasma dragging in the fluid from the um, tissues. Mm -hmm. Now, we forced water out here into the capillary bed. So you reduce the volume and you reduce the pressure. So, This one will actually be reduced by the time it gets to this end. So the hydrostatic pressure will fall from the arterial end to the venous end mm -hmm. because of the resistance and also the loss of fluid. Because the fluid's gone out, the hydrostatic pressure is like a leaky pipe. Okay. If you have the beginning of a leaky pipe, yeah. They'll have a bigger pressure than at the end of the leaky pipe mm -hmm. where all of the fluids leak out. Yeah. Now we've still got the osmotic pressure which is in opposition to the hydrostatic pressure. Mm -hmm. So at the venous end, the osmotic pressure drags the fluid back in. So at the arterial end, the hydrostatic pressure forces it out, yeah. but at the venous end, the osmotic pressure drags the fluid back in. So does the osmotic pressure remain the same? It does. But the hydrostatic pressure is the one that changes? We. Okay. Well done you! <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. Now, 
how this can be uh, changed is obviously if you are um, hypertensive, so if you are a person who suffers from high blood pressure, yeah. then often, often you get what are called oedemas. Mm -hmm. And oedema is a swelling caused by lots of tissue fluid, excess tissue fluid. Mm -hmm. So often older people suffer from swellings or oedemas in their feet or wherever okay. because of they have high hydrostatic pressure. So that's forcing, obviously that's increasing the pressure here and increasing the pressure here. So it makes it harder for the tissue fluid to come back in. Okay, so tissue fluid is literally just plasma? Minus the plasma protein. Because mm -hmm. okay. the plasma protein okay. stay in the capillary, okay. whereas the, um, the fluid goes into the tissues and bathes the tissues. So basically there is kind of tissue fluid in the capillary apart from it's got the, plas it's ah. got the plasma protein. So it's protein. the same stuff. Yeah. So when it's in the capillary, it's called plasma. Yeah. When it's squeezed out into the tissue, it's into the capillary, tissue. it's called tissue fluid because it's squeezed out of the capillaries yeah. into uh -huh. the tissues. It's called tissue fluid, and that tissue fluid is plasma minus the plasma proteins, which have stayed into the in the capillary bed. Okay. So the plasma proteins stay in the capillary because they can't come out, but tissue fluid okay. is the same stuff. So it's the same concentration of glucose, amino acid, salt, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that bathes the um, tissues, and the tissues obviously then take up the products of digestion, uh -huh. um, hormones, anything like that. Mm -hmm. that anything that's in the tissue fluid will pass into the cell at okay. that point. So tissue fluid isn't really formed, it's kind of already in the capillary, it's just when it gets squeezed out, the plasma protein stay in the capillary. Yeah. And so then it like does form the tissue fluid. Exactly right. The plasma protein in the yeah, capillary. yeah, it's just the same stuff. Oh, okay. You know, it's, it's just like, you know, you've squeezed out the, the liquid, mm -hmm. or the liquid's been forced out because the hydrostatic pressure is greater than the osmotic pressure, mm -hmm. and because of that, it's forced out the water, some of the plasma, and okay. as that some plasma has been forced out into the tissues, it's now called tissue fluid because it, it's not okay. in the in the capillary. Is it why there's lower pressure, hydrostatic pressure this side because some yeah. of the tissue has gone out? Yeah, some, some of the plasma has gone out, which has reduced the volume, which has reduced okay. the, the pressure, which has reduced the hydrostatic so pressure. So then there's less plasma in the capillary? Yes. But so it comes that, back okay. in, oh, yeah, so it drags yeah, yeah. it back in, because here the osmotic pressure is is greater than the hydrostatic pressure. Okay. So at this end, the hydrostatic pressure is greater than the osmotic pressure, and at this end, the osmotic pressure is greater than the, um, here, the hydrostatic pressure is greater than the osmotic pressure. So this, the hydrostatic pressure that forces it out, here there's still an osmotic pressure dragging it in, but the hydrostatic pressure is greater than the osmotic pressure that's in opposition to it. Okay. Whereas here, at the venous end, the osmotic pressure dragging the tissue fluid back into the plasma mm -hmm. is greater than the hydrostatic pressure forcing it out. Okay. Last point to make is if you have excess tissue fluid, will empty into a blind ending system which is called the lymphatic system. Okay. So 20% of the tissue fluid doesn't drain back in. It goes into the lymphatic system and this empties back into your bloodstream that you're in your thoracic duct. So this is a blind ending drainage system that goes throughout your capillary, throughout your tissues, and that absorbs excess tissue fluid, um, and that's got some valves in it as well. And then that, it's not a circulatory system, it's a drainage system. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And that's tissue fluid. Okay.